It's a beautiful day and we're gonna read some stuff that definitely isn't beautiful. Some Reddit stories that are concerning but also very fun to read and I hope you guys have a good time today. If you do, make sure you subscribe if you want to. And the first one that we're gonna read today says, Am I the gay hoffer exposing my husband's affair with his girl best friend at a family barbecue after his father told me to get over it? Okay, so first of all, what? His dad told you to get over it? Yeah, get over it by leaving him. I, 29 female, have been married to my husband, 31 male, for five years. We've had a good relationship relationship overall, but there's always been one issue. His girl best friend, Megan, 30 female. She's been in his life since childhood, and while I've always felt a little bit uneasy about their closeness, I trusted my husband and I tried to be cool about it. Megan is always around. She's at her house constantly, they text all the time, and she even comes on family vacations. Every time I brought up how their friendship made me uncomfortable, my husband would brush it off saying that she's practically a sister, and that I was overreacting. To make matters more complicated, my mother-in-law, 58 female, is amazing. She's always had my back and has told me multiple times that if Megan made me uncomfortable, I should talk to my husband about setting boundaries. On the other hand, my father-in-law, 60 male, has a very different attitude. He adores Megan and has always said that she's part of the family and that I just need to deal with it. He thinks my discomfort with their friendship is just jealousy. Yeah, I already hate this. Fast forward to two months ago, my husband started acting distant, coming home late and being secretive with his phone and just off. I had a gut feeling something was wrong, so one night I went through his phone when he was in the shower. That's when I found out he and Megan had been having an affair for months. I was so crushed. I confronted him and he admitted everything. He swore it was a mistake, said that he loved me and begged me not to leave him. I didn't know what to do so I stayed quiet for a bit trying to process everything. A couple of weeks later, my in-laws hosted a big family barbecue. I was still reeling from the affair but my husband convinced me to come saying that we needed to keep up appearances while we worked things out. I went but I was a wreck inside, especially knowing that Megan was going to be there. Sure enough, Megan showed up like nothing had happened, acting all friendly with everybody, including me. I was boiling inside, but I kept it together. Then during dinner, my father-in-law made some offhand comments about how Megan would always be part of the family and that I needed to get over my insecurities. He said this in front of everybody. That was my breaking point. I stood up and looked straight at him and said, you know what? I'd get over it if she wasn't sleeping with my husband. The entire table went silent. Megan's face turned white and my husband tried to calm me down, but I wasn't having it. I told everybody exactly what had been going on. The sneaking around, the lies, the betrayal. Yeah, and good on you for doing that, OP. My mother-in-law was so furious, but not at me. She laid into my husband and Megan saying that they destroyed our marriage and disrespected me. My father-in-law, though, had the audacity to say that I was overreacting and that affairs happen. Oh, get out of here. But I shouldn't have aired it in front of the family. He even defended Megan, saying that she made a mistake and that we should all move on. Wow, the audacity. I left the barbecue and I've been staying with my mum ever since. My husband keeps on begging me to come home and my mother-in-law has been supportive, but my father-in-law is telling the whole family that I'm the one causing causing drama and blowing things out of proportion. Am I the gay hoffer exposing their affair in front of everybody at the barbecue? Should I have kept it private? Or was I right to call them out after everything? Edit based on what you guys are saying. I and mother-in-law are very close and I should show her what you guys are saying about father-in-law possibly cheating and see if maybe she wants to look into that. Their marriage has been very rocky and she has been wanting to get out of it but he's been the breadwinner for years. Wow, that's so interesting. Yeah, the father-in-law is probably cheating. Why else would he be so quick to defend cheating? Like, oh, it happens. It's not a big deal. Yeah, don't overreact, everybody. I'm totally cheating too. Like, yeah, he probably is. I'm not sure if it counts as a mini update, but after seeing some of the comments about father-in-law maybe wanting to sleep with Megan, I asked mother-in-law if there was something weird going on there or if she knew that he'd cheated before. They've been married for a long time and he's cheated 10 times. Well, there you go. What a piece of crap. One that you guys might find important is that he slept with Megan's mother. Maybe that's why he loves her so much. As far as she knows, he didn't sleep with Megan. The other eight were people that he worked with and one was an old high school friend. I'll also be researching for a lawyer tomorrow morning. Wait, so even though he cheated 10 times, your mother-in-law still stayed married to him? Why? Little mini update number two. Mother-in-law told father-in-law to get a DNA test with Megan or she's divorcing him. Well, there you go. He said he'd try and schedule something tomorrow. I'm so glad that I came to Reddit for this or some of the stuff that we're finding out wouldn't have come to light. If Megan is her husband's sister, that'd be hilarious and that'd be their problem. Also, mother-in-law is getting a divorce no matter what, but he doesn't know that yet. She just decided that an hour ago. Yeah, I will be helping her with a place to stay and she wants to get into real estate with me so I'll be trying to pull some strings and help her out in every way I possibly can. She seen all the comments and with Reddit and my support gave her the strength to leave. It's a painful situation for the both of us but I'm so happy that we're going through it together so that we can have each other's support. Yeah, that's such a good point, OP. When the DNA test results come back, if it for sure happens, she'll be cutting off my ex-husband and father-in-law. I also wanted to say that father-in-law was sleeping with Megan's mother for maybe a month or two. That's why mother-in-law 
father-in-law thinks the timelines do add up, and your father-in-law knew about the affair, that boils my blood. He isn't even a decent enough human to tell me about it. If it was me or mother-in-law cheating, both father-in-law and ex-husband would be very pissed. Some of you asked why he didn't just marry his best friend. At the very beginning of my and my ex-husband's relationship, she was in a serious relationship. I'm assuming that when he would go and comfort her after they broke up, that's when it started. My husband did try to contact me, but I was told not to block him. But it's getting hard to ignore the text. All of these updates did not happen in an hour. I posted this somewhere else first. Megan contacted me. Okay, so we're going to read what that says in a second. They've got an appointment in an hour, so the result should be back in a week or a week and a half. In the Megan screenshots, I think she meant Megan as in that's her. I said, who is this before she said that, as you can see. The people saying that it's a lie because of that need to use their brains. I did send Megan the screenshots of what he said, waiting for a response. It'll be posted here with a link for the people that said to send her his text. Okay, we'll also read that in a second. I'm so grateful for all the support that I've received. If I could, I'd reply to all the messages and comments. I'm also very thankful for the people on TikTok who've shared my story. I've seen two people so far, and if you see any more, please let me know. Wow, this is unbelievable. Okay, let's read the conversation that OP had with Megan. Megan contacted me. I cannot believe that she's mad at me. I was getting cheated on for who knows how long, and it's because I wasn't quite unquote good enough, but I did everything for that man. You're a... Who is this? It's Megan. I can't believe you would tell a whole family about this and now I have to get a DNA test so I can find out if I've been sleeping with my brother. You made this whole thing so much more drama than it had to be. I see why he cheated on you. And do you know what he would say about you? He said after you two got married that he thought you were disgusting. You are disgusting and a stupid... I hope you really go through with the divorce and then he can be mine. You're a terrible person and a terrible wife. Coming from a cheating home wrecker. Are you joking? What kind of wife are you if you won't cook and clean for your husband every day? I know I can treat him better. So you're flexing that you've got a cheater now? He's probably gonna cheat on you too. Oh my god, imagine calling OP disgusting. You're not the disgusting one, OP. Okay, so that might be your half-brother, but would you still date him? Do you hear how gross that is? If anybody's disgusting, it's you two and your little family affair. You yeah, I never cheated on my husband, so don't call me a and I did everything for him. I cut friends off for him, I cut family off for him, and I did everything that he asked. How did he repay me? By cheating on me. You both are gross humans and I prefer if you don't contact me anymore. Yeah, well said, OP. These two are revolting. Oh, get over yourself. That is basic wife things. It's sad that he had to ask you to do things instead of you just doing them. You work from home, how hard could it be? You're just a lazy s and I hope you never find love. Wow, okay. Megan is delusional. Oh yeah, the homewrecker and the cheater. They're the winners in this, aren't they? That's hilarious. Yeah, like this comment says, it's amazing how delusional some people are. Like she's calling you the s I hope you find somebody 10 times better than him. Yeah, and it wouldn't be hard to find somebody better than him. If he cheated on you, OP, he's probably going to cheat on Megan. Both of them are so gross. Okay, so I think OP sent this screenshot to Megan. Is this your man? Come back, come back, please. I want to talk things out. You didn't turn your red receipts off. I know you're seeing these. Please answer me. Please, I just found out that she might be my half-sister. I don't want anything to do with her. This is a very hard time for me. Please come back. You just don't care about me. You're a terrible person if you don't come back. What if she is my sister? Are you just going to leave me alone during all of this? Please come home. I want a life. And then Megan says he's lying to you just to make you look dumb and take him back. Are you dumb? It's so obvious. Yeah, whatever you say. Why would he want to actually get back with a lazy s like you? You must be delusional. And then OP sends him a Spotify link of the Sweet Home Alabama song. That's so funny. Oh yeah, OP's delusional. Like the top comment says she's actually delusional. Talking about how you cut off family and friends saying that it's just what you should do as a wife and that you shouldn't have to be asked to while she's banging your husband, who you asked to cut Megan off, and he refused. You shouldn't have to ask your husband not to cheat on you. Then she has the audacity to call you a and a bad wife. Literally insane. God, I hope you find somebody who treats you with some respect soon. Yes, yeah, same here. But yeah, it's not going to be hard to find better people than these two. That's so gross, and they think you're the bad person. That's so funny. Yeah, like this one. Tell her it's crazy how she's calling you a when she's the one who likes to have affairs with married men. Yeah, you don't have a leg to stand on here. I feel like they know that too. Yeah, like the top comment says, props to you for standing up for yourself and not letting your father-in-law's comments slide. And hey, at least you know why your husband was always so accommodating to Megan. Yeah, the comment below that too, that father-in-law is an unbelievable piece of crap a-hole. And I don't like to ill wish, but I almost hope the DNA results do come in and those three wind up puking their incestuous guts out. The whole thing is so gross. Thank God for the mother-in-law and amazing that OP is standing up for herself. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I hope this one isn't real. For everybody 
everybody's sake. I hope it's made up. It probably isn't though. Post number two says, am I the gay half for telling my wife to stop crying about missing out on our daughter's wedding? As the title says, my wife 53 female and I 55 male have three children. Brett 27 male, Amy 25 female and Lynn 24 female. Now let me say, I love all of my children in their own way, but no child's ever given me a headache like Lynn. She's our wild child. Got a college degree at 16, began working and saving up, moved to Louisiana once she turned 18, got more college degrees and lives a pretty nice life. I'm proud of her of course, but she always has been our wildly independent, argumentative, intelligent little girl. She's the more social one too, covered in tattoos and piercings and always has funky hair. I'm proud of her and I love her, but she's always been a non-traditional child. Lynn met her now husband Brad 27 male when she first moved to Louisiana. Brad's like Lynn, tattoos and piercings up the wazoo, non-traditional. He's a good kid and I like him. He protected Lynn and has been by her side for a lot of stuff. I actually love that kid for protecting my baby girl. Lynn's going to be the first child of ours to be married. So when we heard the news about their engagement, my wife was super excited. She started talking about wedding planning and all that girl stuff. Lynn and Brad were both up front about not wanting a wedding and just wanting a small party with mainly family and some friends as a celebratory thing. My wife was really upset and pushed at Lynn till she reluctantly agreed to plan a wedding. Not even a week into wedding planning, Lynn and my wife had a spat about floral arrangements, which then led to Lynn flying back home to Louisiana. Lynn announced they'd eloped and they'd be planning a small intimate get together in New Orleans around Halloween time. My wife lost it. Her and Lynn got into a huge argument over the phone which led to them both not speaking. My wife cries every time this situation gets brought up, saying that she missed out on her little girl's special day. After a few weeks of this nonsense, I finally snapped and said, why are you surprised? Lynn didn't want a wedding in the first place. She's our least traditional child. I'm still glad that we at least got the engagement announcement. Stop crying about it and wait until Brett or Amy get married because they're the ones that will actually enjoy the wedding stuff. My wife called me a few names and has been avoiding me. I really don't mean to be an a-hole, but Lynn is the last child that I'd expect to want a big grand wedding. I mean, for f sake, she's a nurse that does hair on the side who's also a practicing witch. That child makes no sense. I'd more expect Brett to want the big wedding when he and his boyfriend eventually get engaged. It also felt wrong that she tried to force it on Lynn. Lay the brutal honesty on me. Do I roll over and apologize? Or do I continue to stick up for Lynn over this mess? No, I don't feel like you're the a-hole at all. By the sounds of it, you really know your daughter and you know that pushing something onto your daughter isn't going to be a good idea. And also, it's not fair either. Yeah, like this comment says, a good father knows his children and what's going to make them happy. Not the a-hole. You're a good dad and keep standing up for your daughter. Unfortunately, your wife was only thinking about her happiness, not your daughter's. Yeah, and like this comment says too, does your wife realize that she was probably the reason that your daughter eloped? If she let Lynn do whatever kind of wedding she wanted, I'm sure out of the small guest list, you both would have been invited. Not the a-hole. Yeah, and the top comment too, not the a-hole. Your wife missed her daughter's wedding because she was acting like she was planning her own wedding. Whatever type of flowers your wife wanted is completely irrelevant because she's neither the bride or the groom. OP said, that's what I'm saying. My wife wanted Lynn to have this overly girly wedding that Lynn just didn't want. Lynn was leaning more towards a gothic sort of theme for the wedding and my wife wanted a more traditional Christian wedding, which was super weird from the beginning because Lynn has always been open about her style and religious standpoint. I just want my wife to accept Lynn. No, you're definitely not the a-hole OP. From what you've said here, your wife's been overstepping from the beginning, planning the wedding that your wife wants, not even thinking about Lynn, and then is surprised when Lynn does elope? Like, of course they did. Either they were going to do that, or have a wedding that they didn't even want. That's so wild, and now your wife is upset at you, OP? No, you're not in the wrong, OP, and you didn't say anything that hurtful either. You said, why are you surprised? Lynn didn't ever want a wedding. Stop crying about it and wait until Brett or Amy get married. Yeah, that's not unreasonable. But yeah, your wife's only sad because Lynn isn't having the wedding that your wife wanted. And that's so frustrating. Like, this is not your wedding. And you're having a spat about the floral arrangements? Like that comment said, whatever type of flowers your wife wanted is completely irrelevant. Yeah, that's actually infuriating. The next one says, am I the gay hoffer embarrassing my friends by correcting my drink order? I, 22 female, don't drink for personal reasons, but I love the taste of pina coladas. I recently went out to eat at Outback Steakhouse with two friends and saw pina koala on the menu. It was described as a cocktail version of a pina colada with a koala on it. When the surfer came, I asked if they could possibly make a virgin pina koala and she said that she'd ask the bar. A few minutes after, somebody from the bar came over and said, here's a virgin version of your drink and put it on the table. It was not a pina koala. It was a tall pink drink with a koala rubber duck on it. I later figured out it was their other koala themed drink. She had already left before I could process that I got the wrong drink. I looked at it again and I said aloud to my friends, this isn't a pina colada. One of my friends responded with, it's okay, at least you got a drink. I shook my head and expressed that I ordered a pina colada and that's what I was expecting. My other friend shook their head in response saying they went through the pain of making the drink virgin for you. Just be grateful. What do you mean 
spend the pain of making it. It's not any harder. I said that I was going to correct them because it wasn't what I ordered. My friends went back and forth with me for a while insisting that I'd be completely rude and unnecessary to correct them. They even suggested that I just drink the drink and only correct them if the drink was awful. I'll admit I did try it and it was good in its own right, but I wanted a pina colada. They kept on reiterating how the bar went through the trouble of going out of their way to make a virgin drink for me, so I should be happy that they even did that. Your friend sounds so annoying OP. You haven't done anything wrong by wanting the drink that you ordered. And what are they saying they went through the trouble of making it? Did they just blow in from stupid town? Finally the surfer arrived and I corrected my order, ignoring my friends. The surfer was very kind and apologised and had the bar make me a virgin pina koala. My friends were so annoyed and irritated with me the whole night. They insisted I was being a Karen and I should have just stayed quiet. They said that I embarrassed them with my entitlement. It's not entitlement. I just continued to ignore them. The end of the night was awkward and I've been thinking about the incident for a few days. I normally do struggle to correct my order so being able to do so was a big step up for me. But I still wonder if my friends were right and I should have been grateful to receive anything. Am I the gay hoe? Like oh my god how entitled are you? You should be grateful that they went through the trouble of not pouring alcohol in your drink. Yeah the top comment not the a-hole it's not entitlement it's getting what you ordered. Making a virgin drink is no more complex than making one with alcohol in it. It's all about liquids and proportions. I guarantee you that if they'd ordered steak and got a bowl of soup or if they ordered a Dyson from Amazon and got an AliExpress special they would have said something fairly robust about it. I really wonder whether somebody changed your order to include one with alcohol and you ruined their prank or something. If you didn't know how it was meant to taste you would find it harder to know if it was a virgin drink. There's too much emotion involved for it to be solely about sorting out an incorrect order. As long as you didn't shriek like a tea kettle you're good. Yeah that's such a good point. Yeah maybe they were trying to get OP drunk or something. Yeah for sure like that comment said there's way too much emotion involved for it to be solely about sorting out an incorrect order. Yeah, that's right. Like, why do they even care? And yeah, maybe they don't care. Maybe it was on purpose. Yeah, like this comment says, not the a-hole. Your friends need to learn that merely asking for things to be corrected is not an issue by itself. Having a bad attitude or being unreasonable is the problem. And it doesn't sound like either of those apply to you. Yeah, like it wasn't anything. You definitely didn't do anything wrong, OP. Or entitled. Or like a Karen. Definitely not. Yeah, like the top comment said, it's weird that they even care. Is there more to this that they're not telling you OP? Like if they genuinely think that you embarrassed them with your entitlement and that it was so hard for them to make a virgin drink, they sound kind of insufferable. Okay, the next one is called Am I the A Huff for refusing to attend my brother's wedding because of the way that his fiance treated my wife? So my 32 male brother, 29 male, is getting married next month. I was originally excited, but things took a turn when his fiance, 27 female, made some comments about my wife, 30 female. For context, my wife struggles with fibromyalgia, which affects her energy levels and sometimes causes her to need extra support. It's something we've navigated together for years. At a recent family event, my brother's fiance told my wife in front of everybody that it was selfish for her to try for a baby given her condition. She implied that raising a child with fibromyalgia would be a burden on me and suggested that we should think about adoption instead. My wife was mortified. She tried to brush it off in the moment but I could see how much it hurt her. After we left, she broke down, saying that she felt judged and humiliated. The next day, I called my brother to talk about it. I wasn't expecting an apology from his fiance but I I at least hope my brother would back me up and recognize how hurtful the comment was. Instead, he defended her saying that she didn't mean it that way. She's just direct. You know how she is. Yeah, that's what a-holes say. That really pissed me off. I told him that it wasn't about how she is. It was about respecting people, especially family. He shrugged it off and then said that I was overreacting. After thinking it over, I decided I won't be attending the wedding if his fiance can't acknowledge how inappropriate her comment was. My brother called me dramatic and accused me of ruining his big day over a small comment. Now now my parents are involved saying that I need to just let it go for the sake of family harmony. <laughs> oh, get out of here. They think I'm being an ass for skipping my brother's wedding over one awkward moment, but my wife feels validated by my decision, and honestly, so do I. I don't think we should have to endure that kind of disrespect just to keep the peace. So am I the gay hoe? No, of course not. And round of applause, somebody in one of these stories is standing up for their partner. Amazing OP. Yeah, like the top comment says, Beyonce should apologize for the sake of family. She's being way too dramatic and tearing the family apart. Why would she poison the relationship between family this way and ruin her husband's wedding day by being so hateful and dramatic? I mean, that's only you being you, you being honest, just the way that you are. No? A-hole, there's your answer. The second top comment says, not the a-hole. Your brother's fiance was out of line and your brother defending her is unacceptable. It wasn't just a small comment. It was hurtful and disrespectful to your wife. And you're not being dramatic, you're setting boundaries. If they can't respect you and your wife, you're completely justified in skipping the wedding. Family harmony doesn't mean putting up with disrespect.
serious respect. And OP said, exactly, boundaries aren't drama. Yeah, and why should you apologize, OP, to keep the peace? But what, your brother's fiance doesn't have to apologize to keep the peace? You're not the a-hole, OP, and that's enough for today. Another adventure of an episode. I hope you guys had a good time today. And if you did, make sure you let me know down below in the comment section. And before you go, I've got something wholesome to show you. Dads who didn't want a dog. Yeah, how true is that? Now we're soulmates. <laughs> I know I said I didn't want a dog, but we're soulmates now. The t-shirt with their face on it is so cute. And yeah, this happens all the time. The crime, the criminal, innocent, case dismissed. Yeah, the little baby. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to walk in your cooking. The poor pattern is so adorable. Look at the little kitty. Yeah, innocent, case dismissed. Thank you for watching, guys. I hope you had a wonderful time today. If you did, make sure you let me know down below what you thought and also subscribe if you want to. And the comment of the day once again goes to Spider Gamer. Day 134 of telling the Vincey fam god awful jokes I heard on the internet. What did the buffalo say to his son when he left? Bye, son. <laughs> yeah, that is a god awful joke, but it's definitely funny at the same time. Thank you once again for sharing this, Spider Gamer. And thank you for watching, everybody. I'll see you in tomorrow's concerning but also fun episode. So make sure you look after yourself and make sure you have a beautiful, amazing rest of your day. And you know what I'm about to say because I say it every single day. Bye!